Hi, I'm Eric Kai, the chemical statistician, and today I'm going to demonstrate to you how to calculate expected counts in a contingency table using joint probabilities. In an earlier video, I showed how to calculate expected counts using marginal proportions and marginal totals. So this is just another way of doing the same thing. Now, this method, using joint probabilities, better shows the rationale and the theory behind how the assumptions of independence between two categorical random variables leads to implications about joint probabilities, marginal probabilities, and expected counts. So this method is a good exercise in understanding really what we're trying to do here. Okay? Both methods work well to calculate expected counts, and I encourage you to try both and see which one works better for you. But this method is a good mathematical statistics exercise. Okay, so let's go back to the example of people's preferences for ice cream flavors. So I have two categorical random variables, gender and flavor. I have two categories for gender, men and women, and I have three categories for ice cream flavor, chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And here are my observed counts in these six cells. Here are my marginal totals for flavor. Here are my marginal totals for gender. And this is my grand total. Now, remember that expected counts are necessary for performing tests of independence between two categorical random variables. The null hypothesis is that gender and flavor are independent, and the alternative hypothesis is that gender and flavor are dependent. Given this null hypothesis, let's figure out how we can use that to determine expected counts. Now, going back to discrete random variables and their probability mass functions. The population count for a, for a particular category is equal to the probability of that category times the grand total. And that is true whether you're talking about a univariate probability distribution with just one random variable or as in our case, this is a bivariate distribution with two random variables. It doesn't matter if you have a univariate or a multi multivariate distribution. This idea of getting the count by multiplying the probability by the grand total stays the same. And I think that's a pretty intuitive concept to understand. But this is how you get the population count. We, of course, don't know what this true probability is. We don't know what the population count is. This here is a sample of the population. I can't possibly go around to survey all seven billion human beings on the planet asking them what their ice cream flavors are. That's just practically impossible. So the best that I can do is take a hopefully representative sample of the human population in this case, my sample is 920, and get the observed counts for their ice cream flavor preferences. So in that case, I can't get the population count because I'm not counting everybody, but I can get the expected count. And the idea is the same. Instead of having all human beings in this grand total, I have my sample total here, 920. Okay, so I'm distinguishing them between capital N and lowercase n. Now, I don't know what this probability is. This is the true probability. Okay? I don't know what this is, but I can estimate it. And that's why I'm using this hat above this probability here. I am denoting that this is an estimator of the true probability. This, I'm going to estimate this joint probability between gender and flavor. Okay? Now, how are we going to estimate this joint probability? Well, 
by the assumption of independence, and maybe I should write this down here, under H naught, okay, E of G F, or the expected count for these two particular values of gender and flavor, this joint distribution is just the product of the marginal distributions. Or sorry, this joint probability is equal to the product of the marginal probabilities. That's the definition of independence for probability. Okay? The joint probability is equal to the product of the marginal probabilities. So the expected count is equal to the product of the, the estimators of the marginal probabilities times this grand total in my sample. Okay. Now, how do we estimate these marginal probabilities? Well, the probability that, a, that the person selected has a particular gender is just equal to the observed count of the gender divided by the grand total. And similarly, the estimator for the probability of the flavor being a particular flavor, whether it's chocolate or vanilla or strawberry, is just the observed count of that particular flavor divided by the grand total. Okay? So the expected count for a particular combination of gender and flavor is just equal to the proportion of that gender times the, the observed portion of that, gen, of that gender times the observed proportion of that ice cream flavor times the grand total. Okay? So let's, let's go through an example. Let's say if we're interested in the expected count of men who prefer chocolate. Okay? That is equal to 450, the observed proportion of men, divided by 920. That's the observed proportion of men times the observed proportion for chocolate. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My apologies. The observed proportion for, of men is 280 divided by 920. 280 divided by 920 times the observed proportion for chocolate, which is 450 divided by 920. times this grand total, which is 920. Okay? Let's go through another example. Let's say we're interested in the expected count of women who prefer strawberry. That would be equal to 640 divided by 920. That's our observed portion of women. Times 150 divided by 920. That's our observed proportion of strawberry times 920, our grand total. Okay? Now I've calculated these expected counts ahead of time, and these are the expected counts. Okay? And as a sanity check, these three numbers should add up to 280. These three numbers should add up to 640. These two numbers should add up to 450. These two numbers should add up to 320. And these two numbers should add up to 150. Okay? Now, if you compare those six numbers to my last video, where I, in which I used the same data, you may see that there are slight differences. Okay? And those differences are due to round off error. They're not big. It's just I used, I think, two, or th two decimal places for um, the expected counts and three decimal places for the proportions. And because of round off error, I would have gotten slightly different re results um, in the final expected counts. But the idea is the same. And uh, if I didn't round off anything during my calculation in that last video, I would have gotten the same results. Okay. All right. So this is how you calculate expected counts using joint probabilities. As always, you can visit my blog, The Chemical Statistician, to get your short lessons and in-depth tutorials on statistics, chemistry, machine learning, and math. 
You can also follow me on Twitter at ChemStatEric. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope that you learned something useful today.